Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is actually episode 4.5 of Diddy's Guide to GT and HBs. It's a little mini episode in between episodes 4 and episode 5. Uh, the reason that for this episode, shortly, so, uh, shortly right after episode 4 coming out, is that I have to issue a correction. Sometimes in this mod pack, up-to-date information is not always there, depending on announcements made or changes in the change log. It's such a big change log almost every time that there are some things that get missed, some things that are not uh are, are not put to the forefront so in this case production was changed on caps for boards and i'll get to that in a second so there is a correction that i need to issue because it's different from what i talked about in the previous episode and i wanted to make sure that i give you guys the most up-to-date information that i know so that you can go forth and actually use it in your b journey so there's not much more to say i'm going to issue that correction then i'm also going to show you how i'm going to breed over stats because somebody asked about it and i thought it'd be a good idea to just kind of do an unedited hear my thoughts filter i'm going to do a walk it walk you through with it i'm going to try and transfer over some stats to a b from my breeder b and we'll talk about that process and i'm just going to try and show you this is not going to be like a very very formal episode this is just going to be off the cuff me issuing that correction and showing you what I think about how to, you know, what I'm thinking about when I'm trying to transfer and breed stats over. Let's get into it. So in the previous episode, I told you that you're going to want three diamantine electron tubes for a production of 15.625 for your alvearies. That would come out to one enhanced circuit board with two diamantine. That's increased production by plus 1.5. You can read that right there in the electrical simulators. So that's two on one board and one on the other board. I said that this was how you get the 15.625 and... Uh, production speed and it goes under the 16 cap however in 2.4 uh, 0.0 the version of this game that was released a couple months ago now we're in version 2.5.1 the stable version that was changed and I was not aware of that information so I wasn't able to give you guys the correct information that I should have and I apologize for that I'm, I'm really sorry I want to give you guys the best information that provide the best um what I know, what I the knowledge I know, but from what I had known from how I did bees before, because I'd, we had started way before 2.4 had come out, that's what I had known. So I just want to issue this correction and say I'm sorry. I hope that you take all the information that's in that video and then take this video as a separate video to, as well to understand that there is a correction and I'm about to show you it uh, and that I will hopefully get the best and correct up-to-date information for my videos going forward. So I have a regular alveary here. I have three electrical stimulators. I'll show that in a second. And of course, just powering it with the alveary transmission. So if I put this Majestic Queen in here, has longer life blinding worker. So this only has longer life. So don't worry about that. Um, blinding worker is what you need to worry about here. So you see on the bottom right, you can see it says effective production B to the power of 0.52 times 3.619. That's just the blinding production speed. If I put the diamantine electron tubes that I told you to do that would give you the 15.625, you'll see it goes up to times 8.781. So now you're thinking, okay, so what is it, does that number mean? To be honest, I don't really know what that number means, but it's based on the formula that they calculated for production of bees and they actually changed that for the production cap for boards so now if i remove the basic circuit boards and i add three new circuit boards two of them are going to have four diamond tiny electron tubes each that's you can see there increases production by plus 1.5 that's four on each board so that's one and then there's going to be a second one here that's also four so we're talking about eight diamond electron uh, diamond tiny electron tubes plus an additional electrical simulator with another intricate circuit board with two diamond tiny electron tubes plus two iron electron tubes. So that's increases production by, pl by plus 0 0.5. So you're talking about 10 diamond tiny electron tubes and it plus two iron electron tubes. That's three intricate circuit boards. That's the highest tier, the gold one that has four of them, three electrical simulators. And now the number actually reads B to the power of 0 0.52 times 15 point seven nine zero now you have actually gotten close to that 16x cap any more than this you will actually go over and turn your b from pristine to ignoble however i wanted to issue this in showing you that there actually is a newer version now now you can actually see in the bottom wherever your whala is or whatever uh you can see how much production you have so the new setup is two boards 
each two intricate circuit boards, each with four diamantine electron tubes, plus an additional intricate circuit board with two diamantine electron tubes and two iron electron tubes for a total of 10 diamantine, two electron, to give you times 15.790 production. And as you can see, as you will see, this will actually start producing quite a bit of combs for the future. So I just wanted to issue this correction and hope that you will take this, plus the information I had in the last video, and and you know, sincerely take my apologies and forgive me that I got the wrong information. I will do my best to give you guys the best information going forward. One other piece of information that was actually brought to me at my attention was that it might be hard to visualize with kind of the setups I was talking about in the previous episodes with some of the blocks if you don't see it in person formed in the multi box. So, right here in front of me, I have a multi block with three of those frame housings, like I was talking about, holding the maddening frames of frenzies and the electrical simulators with the intricate circuit boards with four golden electron tubes each. So this is the kind of setup that you would expect to have. You don't have to use three frames. I only use one or two most of the time. And I used and I use the two intricate circuit boards uh, with gold, uh, gold, four golden electron tubes on each uh, with both of them. And this is how you mutate. So this is what I would call as the most basic passive um, kind of uh, set up to breed and if you needed to you could throw in a rain shield you could throw in an alveolar unlighting you could obviously throw in fans heaters whatever you need to this setup and it's all powered by the transmission back here so that you would uh so you could breed the bee in the optimal position now the next thing is also using the alveolar fans i thought if i showed you the fans and the heaters you could actually see and visualize in the alveolar the cold climate i have three of these and it brought down the cold climate to here and this is actually where i'll issue another correction i actually said in the last episode you might find it hard to go from cold to icy however if i remove this block add an alveolary fan you'll actually see that this will actually go below zero and now you have an icy climate temperature so it's, it is possible with alveolary fans that must have been another change that was not uh provided uh in any information any documentation anywhere that i could find before making that episode and i sincerely apologize for that but it, it, it but with you the more you stack the more fans i have four of them on here you'll see i went from a normal normal like this regular alveolary over here uh, to a icy normal because I added four fans on it. Similarly, if you come look at this alveolary, I have two alveolary heaters on it. So now we are in hot, 132% and normal. That's with two alveolary heaters. Went from uh, each adding the 20%. So now we have a hot uh, and normal biome in this alveolary. This one is icy normal and you can mix and match using hygro regulators, whatever you need to get the correct humidity, get the correct climate and tolerance. But I just wanted to show you visually how you would how you would assemble these kind of multi blocks so you could see that there are definitely ways you can do it. You can do whatever setup you please and feel free to mess around with it and tell me what combinations you came up with to find for different bees that you might use. The next part and final part of this video is actually going to be me kind of showing you my thoughts on how to kind of breed the stats over from your breeder bee. I have a regular forest princess here, as you can see, it's just one that came straight out of the hives, normal base stats. And I have here my majestic drones, which are actually my breeder bee. Now this is the original breeder bee that I got when I first started the pack back in LV. And you can see I only have longer on here because I didn't have access to the explosive B as of yet. So I'm, longer was the best I could get. I got the starter speed, so I got blinding, flowers, 4X, no, no effect. And I was able to use a climatizer to get both five. No cave dwelling because obviously I was in a overworld and I had light, so I didn't need to put it underground. But this is what I'm saying. When you can make your breeder be however you want it to, because it needs to work for your specifications. Now, in the early game, when you only have access to longer, you might want to keep longer on here. And if you get access to longest, you can eventually put longest on here. So now I'm going to walk you through kind of, you know, no editing kind of, we're just going to walk to do it together. I'm going to show you how I would do things. I'm going to use an accelerator, obviously to make it go a little faster. I'm using oblivion frame. So you, so you can, you know, fall along hopefully. So I'm going to take a force princess and I'm going to put a, uh, well, let me actually, let me, let me grab a few additional forest print drones just so you know that these are all the same forest drones that, that come with the forest princess. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to put a forest princess with a majestic drone. So now I got three drones back, right? So now I'm going to take a look at all of them and I would say, okay, this forest princess has species forest, inactive majestic, longer blinding. Now this is here, right? Now if you look at this majestic drone, you'll see that now this majestic drone 
has the carry the stats of the forest over and kept the majestic drones in the inactive trait so now what i would do personally is take this forest majestic and put it together with this majestic forest and if you remember the punnett square from biology then you would have a chance to transfer this rate over to the active traits and you can also see the forest here the majestic is still here the four four majestic is still here with the longer blinding on this side so now i'm going to take for me personally and you can do it however you want i'm going to take this forest princess put it with this majestic drone and now combine so now I have a forest princess. Now I have some majestic drones. So now you can see now I have longer, but this is still slowest. This is blinding 4x average. You can see some of the stats carried over here. However, I'm just looking for uh, for the blinding trait to come over. That's what that's what we're trying to go for here. So you can see longer blinding. It's not full blinding yet. Okay, now look in here. Majestic forest. Now this is forest force, a pure force. This is majestic forest with the blinding trait. Now you got to think to yourself in a Punnett square. Now you have three to one. You're going to have a better chance of getting a forest forest with the blinding trait in the active because you're combining it with another one. So I would recommend using this drone and you can also you could also use this one it also has the same. But this one I would not because it does not have this, uh, you know, this production trait. So I would just take this and I would put it away. I would throw it away. Uh, I have chat turned off, but you could just throw it away. So now I would take this forest, this pure forest, with this majestic drone. Now I'm going over here and I grab these forest and I'm uh, just, these are the ones that I had. That I just got from this thing. Now I'm looking at now I have production blinding, but I didn't. Uh, but I got rid of the longer, but that's OK. Now the blinding is here. Blinding is here. Now, if I look at this slower blinding. OK, so you think of maybe that's a good one to use. This one's blinding blinding. So you definitely could use this one if you want to keep the blinding. Now, this is active, inactive, a pure drone with blinding traits. So now if you combine this together, you'll see that now I have a forest drone. If we move these up and I get grab these forest drones here. Now it is going to have blinding no matter what because all of its drones ca that came from the B cycle will all have blinding over. So as you can see, the longer you do this, and I would use this one because now you have the longer lifespan. So you just have to take the B and go into kind of breeding status where you are breeding with one another to try and get to move the stats over. And now if you are uh, in danger of losing that uh you know uh, the forest trade or whatever a uh, let's say you put this forest princess and you put a majestic and it becomes a majestic forest then put back the original drone into that chain so that it takes the it takes the species trade of forest back in there and that's what i that's what i said that there's going to be this is going to be a long process it's not going to be very easy and for the more stats you breed over you'll see that now you have to you have to continuously uh you know put the bees on, on um on a cycle and just have to say okay this didn't get longer blinding but this one does now i didn't carry over the four times trait and you'll see okay now it has four times over here now it only has three times okay so now i want this one and this one okay let's take this and remember to of course repair your oblivion frame when it gets low so now it's four times here longer blinding longer blinding but only three times longer blinding but only three times shorter blind so you don't want this one but this one is still three times longer blinding. You could look at the stats down here and you just have to keep going back and forth until you figure out uh, and, and find a method that works for you. This is how I would do it. And you get the stats to start carrying over. So now you have three times four X here, three and four X. So you could use that one. You could use this one if, you, if you're okay keeping the three X. Uh, I would not recommend using this one. So you see, you just have to kind of think about how you want to go to the next step. I want blinding on the active and inactive. Okay, I combine one that doesn't have blinding with one that does have blinding. Now half of it, the inactive trait has blinding, the inactive uh, and then the drone one, the active is blinding and active isn't combine them together now you one of the drones will have a chance to become active and inactive of blinding one may not one will one will have neither you know it, it it's just how it's how the it's how biology the Punnett square works and this is why i recommend getting the majestic b that has 4x fertility so you get four drones that so you have better chances to start carrying over those stats and as you go in between different you know different tiers and different bees and that's why having a breeder drone is so cre is so crucial and key because then any bee you get you can just start transferring over the stats one by one and then mixing in the original species drone if you need to kick it back to the forest if it gets rid of the forest and becomes a majestic you have to change it back to a forest you might have to take a little side detour a couple iterations where it goes back to the original state but then you do it all over again
So, like I said, you're going to need a lot of honey for this. You're going to need a lot of patience, a lot of time, as it will take quite a bit for you to get the stats that you wanted over to your breeder bee or, or from your breeder bee to the bee you want until you have gendistry and it makes it a lot easier. But it is a rewarding process when you get to the end. You have a bee that you can passive. You throw it in there with that setup. I told you 10 diamond, 10 tubes, and, t and two electron tubes. That's three intricate circuit boards, three electrical simulators. 15.79 production and you are just going to start speeding through uh, uh you know b whatever you want for whatever you want to get from bees if that's salt if that's titanium if that's steel stainless steel if that's just honey whatnot imperials and, and industries for royal jelly and pollen clusters you can definitely uh you can definitely mix and match do what you need to do find the breeder bee that works for you but just know that it is going to take a long time and that you shouldn't be frustrated as you'll have to do uh, you have to do the process over and over again. Um, so I hope that this helped you guys a little bit. I hope that now you can kind of visualize what my mind was thinking when I'm trying to breed the stats over. And I hope that you're okay with the corrections that I issued. And I just wanted to let you know that I will try my best in the future to make the most up-to-date stuff for the bee guide coming out there's still a few more episodes there's still you know a few episodes many more episodes to go depending on what we talk about witchery industrial apiary mega apiary uh, botania stuff like that uh, and genistry of course so we'll get into those i'll see you guys in the next episode thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you guys later